Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just doing a quick little video. I'm not going to run any trains, but I figure I'd kind of answer a couple questions. Um, show you some pictures, some real pictures, and show you the mess that I've been working on with my signals. But um, uh, on my nice subscribers, he asked me about um, like gutting engines. And again, this one's gutted, GP60. I painted it myself. Um, but I did install a sound decoder. Um, so the nice thing about sound decoders, you get the clickety clack, you know, you get your usual stuff, a headlight, get a bell, horn, and once you got it, you can put just about anything in there because there's nothing in there. So that's the nice thing about it. So on this one, I just, well, I stole the sound decoder from another engine that I wasn't really using. And the reason I'm kind of showing these is for that reason. And I've been looking all, I've been spending about a half hour or 40 minutes looking through all my pictures, real pictures, because they actually had back-to-back -back real brand engines that were used for a local down right down here in Stockton. And I just can't, I was bugging me because I can't find that darn picture. But anyways, um, I put a sound decoder in him. He was... He had an old crummy Atlas uh, decoder, one of the original ones in him, but I've got a soundtrack style sound decoder in him. So, anyways, show you what else is going on. Oh, as far as the, um, I use the NC, um, the sound decoders. And I have, I think, around five installed in different pieces of equipment. I'll show you another one. Okay, got a sound decoder in this guy, too. And again, I did the same thing. I gutted at him. Um, sound decoder so I can uh, turn on the lights but one extra thing I did with this is I got uh, MU cables one on each side uh, one for power so I can uh, pick up power from you know, all eight wheels uh, so I don't really need uh, one of those I to think about it for a second one of those current keepers but the same thing on the other side there's um, the other one is for, what is that for? I'm forgetting right now. Hang on, I gotta think about it for a second. Okay guys, I'm totally forgetting, but I got another um, MU cable on the other side too, and I can unplug them. But they pretty much stay together, run together. They run great with all eight wheels picked up, transferring the power to both engines. So as some of you guys know, I kind of screwed up and blew a number of decoders. So far I found two decoders that I blew and um, I've got a problem with one, and um, but yeah, this whole mess. I didn't blow any of the light bulbs as far as I know yet, but here's my little wiring mess. I took everything down, everything's hanging down, and I spent about, like I said, a little over two hours working on that this morning, and honestly, I just had to walk away from it. And I'm starting to rehook stuff, and I already got a problem. I'm like, what the hell is this? A flashing yellow with a steady red light. I go, ah, oh, something's wrong with that decoder too. So I shouldn't be doing that, so. Okay, what else can I show you? Here's about one third of my WP fleet right here. Uh, what I've been doing, and some of you guys are aware of that is, I get a little poker stick here. But I've been um, taking out decoders so that there's only one decoder in, well, the highest road number. So every other one has a decoder, 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 not yet. These guys just have the regular non-sound. So I'm going to do the same thing. But he's got a decoder. Decoder, decoder. Oh, you know what? He's a dummy. I gutted him, so I'll just roll him around. But I'll do the same thing. I'll get three more decoders. I'm decoder here, decoder there, and decoder there. I go. just seems like it's overkill if I have a decoder in every one with as many engines as I've got. Oh, yeah, not to mention the cost. Hey, Jeep. Well, I've had a couple comments on my headlights, and uh, you guys, you know, see these, like as the newer engine, newer engines have the LEDs, and, you know, they're steady when I look at them, but for whatever reason, when I record, they come out flickering on my recording, on my video, so, but they're actually steady in real life, and I don't know why. I've got a Samsung S20, maybe it has something to do with that, or um heck i don't know what's going on but the, all the leds work fine they stay on steady so they just flicker on the videos i got another eot and my goal is and this is my fifth one is to have um one on every type of car i got one on a box car one on my coal train 
Uh, one on a tank car, one on something else, which I forget right now, but anyway, this is my fifth one, and this will probably be it as far as these things I buy, but hey, they're not that expensive. Oh, if I didn't mention, I'm doing this real quick. I got about uh, 15 more minutes, but um, I'm going to go watch a World Series. I, I don't think I get it on my TV, so I'm going to go out and to my regular hangout bar, have a couple beers, watch a World Series. But anyways, hey, this is Z-Train, the Sierra Mountains. Um, me running, I caught a Z-Train, which was sweet, sweet catch early in the morning. I am westbound, westbound out of Reno. And I'll kind of click on it, get my mouse here and show you a couple pics of this trip. And But it's beautiful. It was a beautiful morning. Wait, let me go the other direction. That way it's all in sync. Looking down... You ever been to Sierras? Uh, man, it's gorgeous. There's uh, Donner Lake. Absolutely beautiful. If you don't like the snow, you might not like this, but hey, you know, wintertime is called Sierra Cement. That snow gets really heavy because it's uh, high water content, so they got to have either flanger or spreader or even rotary. They, you know, they break out the rotary every once in a while. Where'd my little thing go? Oh, there it is right there. Another shot of it. This is a, you know, this was double track, and at some point they took out about 10 miles um, of one of the tracks, so they made a single track, and it was always a kind of a bottleneck, but um, yeah, just cruising along. Need another train there. Beautiful, huh? Coming down to, well, this is Highway 80, and then there's a little tunnel going underneath Highway 80, and then it um, comes along. In fact, you can kind of see the tracks right there, but, um, and then turns back into double track. There's a switch in there, and God, if I remember switch nine, hopefully I'm correct on that, but um, like I said, it's been 10 years since I've done this, and I'm kind of forgetting, but um, yeah, they put the switches underneath either the bridges, or, you know, like I said, this is a sh short little tunnel there, and they put them in there, so all the snow doesn't get in them, but the ice still gets in them too, you know. Sometimes it'll thaw a little bit and then the snow melts and then it freezes up again overnight, so. And hey, buddy, approach to Virgin. I think you had that little problem, oh. Oh, that's me kind of when I was younger and not that great of a picture, but hey. I stopped and picked up a burrito. Man, it was sweet, yummy. Hey, don't worry about your containers. I've only got about a couple hundred containers, but I go, hey, I figure what's more important, a burrito or getting your packages on time. So, hey, you might not get your package today. You might not get it tomorrow, but, hey, you'll get it sometime. Let me finish my burrito. Hey, I'm on another Z train here. I'm the conductor. Um, this is before I went into engine service. But we're passing a grain train here, and the only reason I'm showing this, because this is kind of funny, because um, we had two engines and we had one um, one car. One long car with a couple trailers on it, and that was it. Z train and taking it down to Lathrop, and we're all an ass with one car. It's funny. Hey, out in West Oakland, um, this is when the Amtrak facility, and it was Amtrak uh, for the diesel locomotives, was being built. I figure a few guys might kind of like that picture. It was a number of years ago. Yeah, for those of you guys like street running, yeah, there's street running through Jack London Square, and I forget how many blocks, like six blocks or something like that, but... Um, you stay in that hotel quite a bit where the cursor is. Um, there's a two-story hotel. And Barnes and & Nobles was across the street. Not a lot of nightlife. So it was a great place to stay. You could ride the ferry to San Francisco. You take Bart to an Oakland, Oakland A's game. Man, it was a pretty, pretty good place. Anyways, if you like street running. Yeah, it looks like I'm a conductor here, too. Running a heavy dog coal train. A number of years ago, you see all the mixed cars. Um... Bunch of different old cars. That's probably a CMW car right there. That first car in the head in. Looks like the next one might be a Rio Grande, but just a mix of uh coal cars. I think I'm hooking um well, I just went through Niles Junction. I'm making a left. Well, I'm I'm not running, but making a left there in Newark, headed towards San Jose. I passed the train to another crew. Um, but hey, Dave, CCRX sixty seven hundred. I hope I didn't screw that up, but um Man, he's got a great channel. Uh, he does track maintenance, and uh, man, every once in a while he'll run, but it's all coal, tra coal traffic there. It, it's cool. Excellent channel. This is Ozil Martinez Yard, and there are about three tracks in there, and the place is always busier than it had, mostly tank cars for the... Um, 
uh, for the oil refineries and what have you out there. So, busy place. This is kind of a cool shot running over the uh, Benicia Bridge and yeah, you see the oil tankers coming in and um, trying to figure, you know, they built a new bridge, which isn't in this picture yet, kind of right, right above there. Um, that's not in yet, but um, yeah, it was always cool going over the bridge, especially in the summertime going out there. Man, the weather was just gorgeous out there summertime. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut it off here, going over the uh, famous Ultima Bridge. Um, going eastbound there in um, Livermore area, so cool shot. You know, the crazy thing is going over the bridge wasn't as photogenic as it was to stand down below and take pictures of it because you can see the whole bridge when you're going over it. Yeah, it wasn't as great as you thought. Okay, last shot I had to show Niles Canyon. We're coming out, I'm pretty sure this is T1 because if we're curving off to the right, that's probably T1, but it pulls all the smoke out with you when you come out of these tunnels, so... That tunnel was 20 miles an hour. I'm not sure what it, what it is nowadays, but looks like they're going to do some track work in the tunnel. So, anyways, I'll upload this where my favorite bar is, and they got high speed Wi Fi, so it'll be uploaded uh, real quick. Uh, anyways, hope you guys found this uh, interesting. Appreciate everybody, and I'm going to go shave, and I'm going to go watch a baseball game. You guys take care. Daylight Dave! Oh, okay, I could be Daylight Dave since I'm not running trains. They like thieves, sign it out.